Good morning, South Point. Come on, get up and praise them. You're doing a new thing, making my heart sing. Bringing color to this brand new day. It's never been clearer, you draw me nearer. You're always with me and you're here right now. My song of melody, your perfect love for me. My heart is full of
never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. There's never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. you're never late. Thank you, Jesus, that you're never late. You're always on time, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. If I knew then what I know now, I would be still and let you work it out. Oh, if I knew been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So I worship you. Can we sing that? Never been a day, never been a minute, there's never been a moment that you weren't in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through, God. So that's the truth this morning, church. He's right here. Never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you were in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through God, so I will sing it. There's never been a day, never been a minute, never been a moment that you were in it. There's never been a time that you didn't see me through God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Everyone just lift up your hands. Thank you that we serve a God who's been with us in the midst of our storms. Lord God, there's never been a minute, there's never been a moment where you weren't standing by our side. Lord God, thank you for your great mercy. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your relentless love. Lord God, we don't have to worry because you are always by our side. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. We love you today. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Wow, what a great time of worship. What a beautiful day to be at church, to be with spiritual family and worship the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to South Point Community Church. It is so good to see you all here this morning. Um, we had quite the day yesterday. My family and I, my mom and dad, we all went to Lakeland, Florida, and we got to watch all of our children run in the state ch championship for cross-country running. And it was awesome. There's all different age groups running as the best runners in the state. And I just want to brag on, first of all, uh, our team. It's called No Excuses. Uh, Jill and Zeke Benavidez, who were here the first service, they, they coached the team. They got first place overall in the state. They did absolutely amazing. They swept it. It was, it was just incredible to see how well they did. But what's so cool is to see um, these two coaches who have been at South Point for over 20 years, to see them and the way they've created this culture on this team. At the end of each practice, they do FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athlete, Bible studies that are led by the runners. So they take turns teaching and leading these Bible studies with all these kids. It's the coolest thing you've ever seen. So we went and we just dominated yesterday. Um, it was so cool to start off on Friday night, um, the K through second graders uh, run, and my son and my daughter, Millie, are in that race. Aaron's son, Callan, is in that race. And it was so cool because they all did amazing. They all got top 20, so they all got medals. And my son, Nolan, um, at the very end, he just, I mean, he was running hard the whole time, but he got second place overall in the state for his age. So that was super cool to see that. But then on Saturday morning, yesterday morning, um, the elite runners, for no excuses, ran, the middle school team ran. And it was so cool because Allie Austin, my brother's daughter, she's 13. And she's a really talented runner, but she got, their, their team almost swept it completely, like almost a perfect score. But she got third place overall in the state out of all middle school students. She, she flew, she went 548 average pace per mile. If you don't know much about running, that is absolutely flying, especially for a middle school girl. That's D1 college level pace. So it was an amazing weekend. We had tons of fun, but I am exhausted from it. So I'm just happy to be at church this morning to get rejuvenated. How many of us are excited that we get to be in church this morning and get re-energized and filled up with the Word of God this morning? Amen? Well, we are in the Kingdom series, uh, looking at Matthew again. Before we jump into this, I want to share a quick uh, story that takes place in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has a dream. This dream torments him. He dreams of a statue. Uh, the statue has a head of gold, the chest, uh, a, head, or a chest of silver. His uh, thighs are made of bronze, and then the statues it has feet that are made of iron and mixed with clay. And then in this vision, King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, in his dream, he sees a rock being cut out of a mountain, not with human hands, but God's hands. And this rock comes and it 
collides and hits the feet of this statue. And this fat statue comes falling down and it crumbles into pieces. And this stone starts to grow and becomes a great mountain that overtakes the earth. And Daniel, the prophet, interprets this dream to King Nebuchadnezzar, who has been tormented by this dream. And he says, what this dream represents is that, first of all, the statue represents the four dominant kingdoms of the world at this time. So it represents, first of all, Babylon, then Persia, then Greece, and then the Roman Empire being the iron and the clay. And the uncut stone by human hands, the one that was taken out by God's hands, represents the coming of God's kingdom that collides with the kingdoms of this earth. And when that, that stone hits those feet, it represents the coming of King Jesus during the Roman era, during the Roman Empire, that brings a shattering in to the kingdoms of this earth. I've got news today, South Point, good news that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, has collided with the kingdoms of this world. And when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, when this kingdom collided with the Roman Empire, when Jesus came as the uncut stone, the rock of God, and he collided with this world, the good news is this, is this stone is becoming a great mountain that has overtaken our world. God's kingdom will not be stopped. He is establishing his rule and reign. Can I get an amen this morning? And God is calling you, if you are a follower of Jesus today, he is calling you to join him in his mission to establish his rule and reign on this earth. Let's jump into this scripture, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And Jesus called to him his 12 disciples, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. Are there any followers of Jesus in this room this morning? I want you to know something, followers of Jesus. If you are a disciple of Christ, if you are following after God, if you are walking with him, you carry the same authority as Jesus Christ. The Bible says the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you. Jesus told his disciples, he goes, I'm giving you authority to tear down demolish to tear down demonic strongholds. I've given you authority to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to break every affliction. If you are a follower of Jesus today, the same authority lives inside of you. God has given you power to lay your hands on the sick to be healed, and they will be healed. He's given you the power to speak the truth of the gospel to a dead soul, and that dead soul be resurrected to life. He's given you the power to tear down, demolish, to tear down demonic strongholds today. The same authority lives in you. And God has called you to be his representative, to carry that authority, to go establish his rule and reign in this earth. Praise God. Verse 5, these 12 Jesus sent out instructing them, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. God tells, Jesus tells his disciples, I don't want you to go to the nations. Not yet. That will happen. That will take place. But first, you need to go to the people that are right in front of you. And I've got news today, South Point. We are going to go to the nations. But before we go to the nations, God has a people right in front of you, right in your midst. He has a people that God has called you to reach with the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. The harvest of souls is right in front of you. It's the brother that has turned his back on God. It's the parent who's trying to medicate 
their pain, that's trying to desensitize their problems and their hurting pain. It's the neighbor next door who is serving a dead and empty religion. And they're all around us. It's the neighbor next door that you know they're serving the wrong God. It's the coworker that you cross paths with every day. And you know all that they desire, all they talk about is getting that paycheck so that they can have a moment of escape on Friday and Saturday night. It's the friend who is constantly depressed, who doesn't know the meaning of life, who doesn't see any purpose to life. It's the man tormented by demons who has been diagnosed by doctors with a mental disorder. But you know deep down inside, he doesn't have a mental disorder. He has a demonic stronghold that needs to be broken off of his life. It's the woman who you encounter who is, has been suffering with sickness, suffering with illness in her body, and she's given up all hope. The people that God has called you to reach South Point are right in your midst. God's called you to go to them first. God's called you to go be a light to them. The kingdom of heaven has collided with the kingdoms of this earth, and Jesus is sending you out, and they're right next door. It's the family member inside of your home. We need to stop praying for God to send the lost to us. Oftentimes, we're like, Lord, please send those who don't know you to me so I can witness to them. That's not what Jesus says. He says, open up your eyes, look. The harvest, the field is ripe for harvest. There's lost souls all around us. We're standing in their midst. Pray that the laborers will come so that we can go get the harvest that's right in front of us. Pray that God will open up your eyes with eyes of compassion so that you can see those who are broken and hurting and filled with demons who are desperate for answers. Because those are the people that God has called you first to reach for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. And proclaim as you go, saying, Jesus said, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You receive without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts to flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child and his children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. When heaven collides with earth, there is resistance. The kingdom of God comes in to change everything. And how many of us know that we, as humans, we don't like change? We don't like when someone comes into our lives and tells us that we have to change the way we're living. We have to give up our desires. We have to give up the things that we long for, that we think are going to make us happy. You see, when the kingdom of God comes, it comes against demonic powers, and it dethrones them. It comes against sickness, and it eradicates it. And it comes against death and brings resurrection life. It comes against sin's rebellion, and it conquers it. 
All these forces are working together to come against God's kingdom. And as an ambassador of the king, that resistance that's against God's kingdom is going to come against you. You're going to face demonic strongholds. You're going to face sickness. You're going to face sin's rebellion. You're going to face a people that reject you, that despise you, that hate you. You're going to face sin's rebellion. You're going to face that resistance. What does a world that is lost, broken, and dead, that hates Jesus, need for you to bring to it that Jesus is calling you to bring to it? There's three things I want to talk about today. Number one, it needs the compassion of Christ that moves you to bring the hope of Jesus to it. It needs the compassion of Christ that moves you to bring the hope of Jesus to it. It is compassion that moves people to respond to Jesus. It is compassion that moves us to go out and pray for the sick, to speak the truth of the gospel. It is compassion that moves us to go and love on those and serve those who are lost all around us. In Matthew 9, 36, it says that Jesus was healing the sick. He was casting out demons. He was raising the dead to life. And it says when he saw all these people who were standing in his midst, it said he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And it moved him to minister and care for these lost sheep and to cry out for God to send out laborers to come to these sheep. When you start to have compassion as a follower of Jesus for the lost, it's going to move you to bring the hope of Jesus to them. When Jesus would go into the synagogues, he would preach and teach about the gospel of the kingdom. It says in Matthew 9, 35, he'd preach and teach the gospel of the kingdom. And as he did this, he would heal every disease and every affliction. The gospel, the truth, is not easily accepted without the compassion and love of Christ. A whole lot more people around us would accept the truth of the gospel, would receive Jesus into their hearts, would receive the truth that they had to lay down their lives and change and make Jesus the Lord of their life if they saw compassion from God's people. God is calling you to go love and serve those who are hurting around you. He's calling you to go show acts of kindness, to go show them God's relentless love. It says in Romans chapter two, Paul says, it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. It's God's kindness. If you are a follower of Jesus today, it was God's kindness. It was his compassion. It was his love that drew you to him, that drew you to his presence, that drew you to the truth of the gospel that only Jesus can save us from our sins. Number two, the world needs the truth that has the power to set them free. The world needs the truth that has the power to set them free. The gospel of the kingdom is the good news that Jesus, the king, has come to save us and set us free and give us new life. Without the gospel, all we are, South Point, all we are without Jesus is a dead social justice club. We have nothing to truly offer to the world. We can go serve the the world. We can go show compassion to the world. We can go be kind to the world. But without the gospel, there is no resurrection life. Without the gospel, there is no resurrection from death. There is no healing of sickness. There's no sanctification from a life of impurity. There's no demonic powers being demolished. Without truth, all we are are empty religion. We're a powerless social justice club. We're like the movie stars who give all their money to Haiti. 
And it does no good without the gospel. It only turns their nation into more turmoil because they think that money can save them from their problems, but it can't. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't give your money to those who are poor. You shouldn't give your money to the nations that are suffering. But I want to tell you this, that if you just give money, if you just show compassion without the truth of the gospel, you're really doing no good at all. Because you're not giving them the hope that can set them free. People need to know the power that can raise the dead to life, that can heal them of their diseases, that can cleanse them from their past sins, that can demolish demonic strongholds in their life. The gospel is the power of God for salvation to all who believe. That's what Paul says, Romans 1, 16. It's the power of God for salvation. You take out the gospel. You take out the truth. You will do no true transformation. You'll bring no hope to the world. Many Christians bring compassion, but no truth. And the reason why they do this is because If you take out the truth, there's no tension. You don't get on people's nerves. You don't make people get upset at you. They can just continue to live however they choose. They continue, they can receive your kindness and compassion and blessing, but they can continue to go do the same things they've always done. There's no tension. But the moment you start to bring truth into the equation, it creates tension. It creates an uneasiness. What do you mean, I gotta change? You're not saying I have to give up that, do you? You see, Jesus is offensive to the world. And when you bring the gospel, you create that tension. But we gotta bring the truth to set people free. Number three, the world needs relentless love in the face of hate. The world needs relentless love in the face of hate. Jesus says, I'm sending you out amongst the wolves. Beware of men who will hate you, who will throw you into prison. He says, all men will hate you because they hate me. You will have neighbors, coworkers, classmates, and even family members that reject you, that despise you, that turn their back on you. They will hate you because of who you stand for, because Jesus is offensive to the world. You see, the fact that Jesus is king means that when he comes into your life, you no longer get to be king of your life. You no longer get to be boss of your life. When Jesus is king, it means that he now has rule and reign, he now has authority, he now calls the shots, He now tells you what to do, and now you have to lay down certain things that you don't want to lay down. You have to stop doing things that you don't want to do. You have to give up things that you don't want to give up. You have to let go of relationships that you don't want to let go of. You have to let go of dreams that you may not want to ever give up. But I want want you to hear this. Maybe you're here today, and you're going, man, Ryan, yeah, I don't want, I, 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 I don't, I don't like Jesus being king of my life. I've heard this said many times in conversations. You know, you can do what you want to do as a Christian. I'm okay with that. As long as you don't impose your beliefs upon me. As long as you don't enforce Jesus upon me. As long as you don't say that your way is the only way. I'm fine with you loving Jesus, you pursuing your religion. But as long as you don't say Jesus is the only way, I'll be fine. You hear that, I hear that often. I want you to hear this. You know that you might be right if Jesus weren't king. But I want you to hear this today, Jesus is king. And there are hundreds in this room right now who have realized that Jesus is king. You see, once all of us were blind, once all of us were broken, once all of us were the boss of our own lives, Once all of us were the king, but the moment Jesus became king of our lives, our whole lives transformed. Our whole lives, our eyes were open. For the first time, we found peace. For the first time, we found happiness and joy. For the first time, we were no longer controlled by demonic strongholds. Because when Jesus became king, our whole lives were resurrected to new life. 
You cannot deny that Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord today. And it would be hate. It would be an act of complete lack of compassion if I didn't come and tell you that Jesus needs to be king of your life today. Because the reason you're here today, the reason you're listening online right now is because Jesus wants to save you today. He wants to be the king of your life. And you may be thinking to yourself, man, what if I have to give up all this? Well, yeah, you probably will. But when God takes away something from you, anything from you, it means he has something better for your life. He has something so much better. It's good. Your life is going to be better than ever, whatever you could ever imagine. For those of us in this room who are following Jesus, who Jesus is sending out, will you show relentless love to the lost around you, even when they reject you? When they despise you, when they refuse not to listen, will you continue to listen to them, to show them the compassion of Christ that refuses to give up? Will you continue to love them even if they say bad things about you, even if they reject you? Will you continue to relentlessly go after them? I love in David Brainerd's biography, I've shared this many times, the famous missionary David Brainerd went on to the shores of Africa, and he, when he arrived on Africa, he saw thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, all in these huts, all in these villages. And he saw the smoke rising from all these villages, and he wrote in his journal, the haunting specter of the smoke of a thousand villages burns within my heart. And he gave, from that moment on, the rest of his life, to the mission field of Africa to reach those people because the compassion of Christ overwhelmed him. Even through rejection, even through turmoil, he gave up everything. He was relentless. God has called you to relentlessly love those, even those who hate you, with the compassion of Christ and to never give up on them. Now what I want to do to finish this message is I want to talk directly to those who are following Jesus today, who Jesus is sending out in this passage. He gives us five amazing tips. I'm going to go through these quickly, but five amazing tips to go out and show the world who Jesus is and establish his rule and reign, how to be an amazing evangelist for Christ. Number one, travel lightly. Travel lightly. The more you hold on to, the less you can do. Jesus says, don't take two tunics, don't take two pairs of sandals, don't take extra walking staffs, don't take anything extra. Only take what you have, what you need for today. Don't worry about your provision. I'm going to take care of you. And here's why I believe he's saying this. When you travel heavily, you move slowly. In other words, when you have many things in this life that you're holding on to, when you have money that you're holding on to, when you have many possessions you're holding on to, when you have hobbies you're holding on to, and God calls you to go out and go give your life, to go tell someone about Jesus, it's going to be hard for you to have the time and the speed to go do that if you're holding on to a lot of things. I remember being in France Five years ago, on our 10-year anniversary, the, the worst anniversary trip of our life. You never go to France on a strike. But one problem we also made when we went to France, we were in, in downtown Paris. Everything is through trains. You ride trains for everything. Well, me and Shelby were on our anniversary, so we had to make sure we had enough clothing. You know, you're in France. You got to dress stylish, right? You're in Paris. So we had two huge suitcases that I could fit into. They were huge. The maximum capacity suitcases. And I remember I was tugging both of those giant suitcases around through the streets of France. And every Parisian was looking at me and they're going, that man is an American. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. And they were so kind to us. They were coming to us like, do you guys need help? Like, but then we would get onto the trains. And you know, 
People from Paris, people from France, they're a lot skinnier and smaller than Americans because we eat more and we eat way unhealthier than, than France, right? So we would go onto these trains and our suitcases took about six people's spots. Six Parisian spots. We're here in France. And we would go onto this train and we would take up a huge space. And I remember everyone just staring us down like. <laughs> and me and Shelby were so embarrassed. From that moment on, I have traveled to the Philippines. I've traveled to Africa. I've not brought more than a carry-on that I can't fit overhead in my <laughs> luggage department on the plane. When you travel heavy, you travel slowly, and it's miserable. There are things, it's not wrong to have a lot in this world. It's not wrong to be rich. It's not wrong to have a nice house, have a lot of money, drive a nice car. It's not wrong to have hobbies. It's not wrong to have possessions. But when those things become something you own to something you possess, it keeps you from going to where God wants you to go. I love what A.W. Tozer says when he's talking about Abraham. He said, Abraham owned the world, yet possessed nothing. Okay. Owned the world, owned everything, yet possessed nothing. In other words, the moment God calls you to do something, be willing to let it go. Let go of the hobby, let it go. Let go of the money, let it go. Let go of the job, just let it go. And here's what Jesus is teaching us in this passage that I love. All throughout this passage of Matthew, he's saying, I'm your provider. I'm going to give you the food that you need. I'm going to give you the housing you need. I'm going to make your sandals not wear out. I'm going to take care of you. I'm your provider. You see, we will be a people who let go and will let God take us wherever we need to go, wherever he's calling us to go, if we realize the truth that God is our provider and he gave it to us in the first place. When you have that mentality going, you know what, I may have to give this up, but God's just giving me something better. Because anything, I, anytime God, I give up something for God, every time God gives you something better. Number two, don't let a no discourage you. Jesus says, when you go to one town and they reject you, dust off your feet and go to the next soul who is ready. There are going to be more no's than there are yeses. And what the enemy loves to do is the enemy loves to discourage us. When we go to a neighbor, we go to a coworker, and we, we want to build a relationship with them, and we invite them to church, or we try to share a testimony with them, What's going to happen is there's going to be more no's before you get to your yes. And that's always the devil trying to discourage you. Jesus says, don't let that no discourage you. Dust off your feet. Don't, let it don't take that serious because there's a soul the next town that God is calling you to reach. There's a coworker next door that God's calling you to reach. There's a neighbor that you're going to walk by this week that God's calling you to reach. There's a family member that God is going to bring a divine conversation with, that God's going to connect you with, that God's going to use you to reach them with the gospel. I love the parable of the sower because it talks about how the sower goes out and sows seed. He's sowing the gospel. He's sowing the word of God on the, on the farmland. And it falls onto four different types of soils. Three of those soils don't stick, but the one that does stick becomes a great harvest 30, 60, 100 times over what originally was planted. You see, you may get 100 no's, but on that, or you may get 99 no's, but on that 100 try, you may get a yes. And that seed is going to give you more return than if you would have got yes every single 100 time, every single time on those 100 tries. That's how it's going to be because one person giving their life to Jesus goes out and reaches others and they go share the gospel. They go share the good news with their neighbors, their friends, their lost family members. And it becomes a harvest and it multiplies. The kingdom of God grows. It starts off as a small rock. Jesus came as the rock of God, but it's becoming a great mountain. And one day, the earth will be covered with the glory of God, Habakkuk says, as the waters cover the sea. Right now is the greatest time in history to go win someone to Jesus, South Point. 
Souls are open, ready for the gospel. The king has come. The truth of the gospel is alive. The power of the gospel, resurrection, life is here. Right now is the greatest time in history. Souls are open to receive the news of the gospel. My brother went on to EWU last week. He shared the gospel at chapel, who were all there for extra credit. In worship, not a single soul was standing up. They were all sitting down in their chairs, relaxing, sleeping through the worship service that our team was leading. And you know that's got to be bad when Josh Jameson is leading worship and you're not standing. (laughs) You're just sitting down sleeping. My brother, though, gets up. He preaches the gospel. He tells them the truth of the gospel. And 15 EWU students come down forward last week and surrender their life to Jesus. They all got a one-to-one book, and now they're all going through one-to-one discipleship. Wait till we get our van, South Point. There's going to be even a bigger harvest. The harvest is ripe. Don't let no discourage you. It's the devil keeping you from the great harvest that God wants to bring. Number three, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Jesus says you're going to get thrown into prison. They're going to persecute you. Be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. What is Jesus saying here? Go, go preach the truth. Go to show them the compassion of God. Go, go, go proclaim the gospel. But use wisdom. Use discretion. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Know when to speak and not to speak. Know when to tell them that they need to change and when not to tell them when to change. Show them the love of God and the truth of God. You carry with you the compassion of Christ and the offense of Christ. Know when to use which one. God wants you to act in wisdom. Too often times, someone will come up and just start saying, hey, you need to get your life right with God before they even listen to that person and what they're going through. It's not a good thing when someone comes up to someone who doesn't know God who maybe is struggling with a loss of a loved one, and they say, you need to give your life to Jesus. Well, if they would have listened first to their story and realized that this person just lost their their loved one, then they wouldn't have come in and gone, "You you need to repent right now and give your life to Jesus. They would have showed them the relentless love of God. They would have listened to their story. Don't be abrasive. Don't be over the top. Share the truth. But Paul says, speak the truth in love. It says that in John 1, when Jesus came, he came in grace and in truth. I had a guy once, I was cleaning out my car in my driveway, vacuuming in this church was, uh, they had evangelism in our neighborhood. And they're going door to door sharing Jesus with people. And one guy came up to me as I was vacuuming my car, and I turned off the vacuum, and he said, hey, I wanna, I wanna do you have a second? I said, sure. And I knew what he was doing, but he d- then proceeded to tell me the gospel of Jesus and how you need to repent of your sins, and you need to give your life to Christ. You need to do this right now. You need to give your life to Jesus. And I looked at him and I said, well, I'm actually a pastor. (laughs) And it's like it went in one ear out the other. He just kept on preaching to me. Yeah, but you got to repent. You got to turn your life to Jesus. I said, well, actually, I'm the pastor of South Point Community Church. And he just kept on going. And then finally, I said, I said, hold up, hold up. Can I pause you for a second? I said, I have been serving Jesus for over 20 years, I said, I've made Jesus the King and Lord of my life. I have been saved. I was a sinner and God saved me. I said, I have resurrected life. I am a new person living obedient for Christ now. My whole life has transformed me. He goes, well, you, you still gotta give your life to Jesus. 
I said, you know what? I, I, at that point, I went from patience to angry Ryan. Because I just thought to myself, here this guy is going to go door to door and make every single Christian look like an idiot. So I looked at him. I said, man, the way that you're doing this is all off. I said, one, you haven't listened to me one time. I said, you don't even know who I am. You don't even know my name. Why are you trying to tell me the truth? of who Jesus is if you don't listen. I said, you need to listen to people first. You need to love on them first. You need to show them compassion first. And then the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you and tell you what to say. He looked at me. He's like, that's ridiculous. and just walked away. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm gonna, you need to get saved, buddy. <laughs> Be wise. Here's how you, you walk in wisdom. Listen before you speak. It's that simple. Listen before you speak. Listen in love. And the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom on how to speak to them, to share the good news of Jesus. Amen? Number four, tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. On the other side is to keep it in balance. If you don't tell them the truth, they're not going to be saved. You got to tell them the truth that can set them free. Don't just lean towards compassion. Grace and truth, the Bible says, always come together. When Jesus comes into our world, he comes in grace and truth. Eventually, you need to open up your mouth and you need to tell them the truth. This may be uneasy for you. It may be difficult for you. But I believe over these next couple of days, as you go uh, this next week, as we go invite for trunk or treat and fall days, God's going to use you to tell the truth. Amen? Amen. To speak the truth. Some of us need to tell, speak the truth. Number five, remember the spirit of the Father is with you. Remember the spirit of the Father is with you. Jesus says you're going to be thrown into prison. Some of you are going to be thrown into prison. You're going to be falsely accused. Jesus says, do not worry about what you're going to say because the spirit of the Father is with you and he will be speaking through you. He will give you the words to say. The comfort of going out to go tell the world about Jesus, to go lay hands on someone, to pray for them to be healed, to go show the compassion of Christ, to go speak the truth of the gospel, the comfort in all of this is that the Spirit of the Father is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. He is going to guide you. It's not up to you. You just have to obey. The Holy Spirit is gonna give you the words to say. He's gonna speak through you and he is gonna move on the people that you are talking to. You just have to be bold and, and obey God and do what he's called you to do, amen? As we close today, I want to speak directly to those who do not know Christ, those who are listening right now. This message is for you. This prophecy that Daniel had, or this dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and this prophecy that Daniel told through this dream, it has come to pass. The, the Son of Man, the Rock of God, Jesus Christ has come into our world as King. And He has established His rule and reign on this earth by laying down His life, by resurrecting from the grave. He has broken the power of sin and death this morning. And you may be here and you may be online watching, or you may be in this room right now, and I want you to hear this, these words. Is that king that has come, he's the only one that's gonna tear down the demonic strongholds in your life. He's the only one that's gonna heal you of every disease. He's the only one that's going to wash all of your past sins, all of your mistakes, away. He's the only one that can give you 
resurrected life. The King is here, and He wants to save you right now. He wants to bring you into a relationship with Him. And if you are desperate, He will meet you right where you're at. If you're going, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be the King of my life. Jesus is going to meet you right where you're at today. And you're going to walk free and with new life, new joy, and new peace today. Amen. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Are you ready for Jesus to save you? Are you ready to make him the king of your life? If that's you today and you're going, I'm ready. I want Jesus to be king. I want you to raise your hand right now. Raise your hand high. This is between you and Jesus. I see your hands. Praise God. Praise God. There's hands all around the room. Praise Jesus. Jesus is going to save you this very hour. He's going to give you a new heart. He's going to wash away your past sins. He's going to make you new in him. You're going to leave here as a new vessel this morning. I want everyone in this room just to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to this world to save me from my sins. I received Jesus as the King and Lord of my life. I receive him and will follow him all the days of my life. Make your home inside of me, Jesus. Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Heal me. Wash me clean. Tear down the demons that I face. I am a new creation in you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Lord Jesus, I pray. Lord God, for everyone that raised their hands, that the seed of the truth of the gospel that was just implanted inside their hearts, Lord God, I pray that it would continue to grow and that they would continue to make you the king of their life. And that stone would become a mighty mountain. The kingdom of God would grow in their hearts and they would start to find the purpose that you put them on this earth for, that they would go out and go reach their friends, their neighbors, their family members with the gospel of Christ, the good news of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those, everyone in this room, Lord God, that we would go out and we would be obedient to you. Send us, O oh Lord, as we go invite friends, co-workers, family members to trunk or treat and fall days this week. Lord God, use us, use us to show the compassion of Christ. Use us to show them the truth of the gospel. Use us to make a bold ask in Jesus' name. Lord, you saved us. We want to spread your love to those around us. Use us, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we leave today, we're going to stay in an attitude of worship as we uh, take up our tithe and offering. And I, we, we've been talking about this a lot lately. Our church is so generous. We have really gone to a next level in generosity um, over this past month in our church. And I want to, first of all, thank everyone who is faithfully giving and I, I, I know God, I know in my own life, the more I give, you can't outgive give God. He's just going to continue to bless, bless you more and more. But if you're here today and you're going, I've never given. I, I've never given any money to God. I've never given any tithe or offering to God. I want to encourage you to try it. Try something and see what God does. See if he doesn't bless you. Because I believe he truly is going to work a miracle in your life as you let him have that and, and give that to him with thanksgiving. There's many ways that you can give today. You can give 
through, there's a uh, card in the back of your seat and you can give your money through that in the box, the black box in the, in the back of the room. You could also give uh, by texting uh, the number 77977, texting southpointcc.com and you'll get a link, or southpointcc to that number. And then you can also give through the church app and online as well. So there's many ways you can give. It's easy to give. All you have to do is take a step of faith and let God use you and just bring glory to God through that giving. So let's pray over this offering and ask God to bless it. Heavenly Father, thank you. Lord, we just want to take a moment. Some of us have automated giving. Some of us give on a weekly basis, a monthly basis. But Lord, every time we come to this part of the service, may we be reminded that you are our provider. And Lord, may we worship you with the giving of our finances. Lord, I want this money that I give to be a pleasing aroma to you. I want you to be glorified in it. Well, God, use this money to spread your glory. Use this money, Lord Jesus, to go build missions all around the globe and to use uh, South Point Community Church to reach this city, the people right in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch this video. South Point Community Church. Man, what a great day to be in church. And we are going to have an incredible week starting off on Thursday night with our trunk or treat. I know you guys are excited because we are giving out an unhealthy amount of sugar to you guys. It's the one day of the year where we can eat as many butterfingers as we want. Praise God. And for your children, it's going to be Thursday night. I can't wait. We're going to be uh, filling up this parking lot. You guys saw the video. It was so much fun stuff. Just as a reminder, we're not celebrating Halloween. We are just providing a safe and fun option for you, your family members, your children, your friends to come and have a blast together. So be here. There's food trucks out here. I will say this. One tip for the food trucks, if you want to do that, just get in line early. I'll just say that. You'll thank me later. Um, but that's going to be so much fun, guys. We want to take these cards we've been praying, and now it's time to go out and invite, invite, invite as many people as we can. Let's get rid of these. Life groups, what if you guys went this week and you just invited people in your community or your neighborhood, and you just believe for God to reach this city? We are going to have so much fun on Thursday night for the trunk or tree up here at the church. It's going to be a blast. If you'll take this card and flip it over on the other side, side, you will see this amazing word that says holidays. Guys, we are pumped for the holidays. It's not the holidays. It's the holidays. It's way better. It's going to be so much fun. So we are having our holiday Sunday next Sunday on November 3rd. It's like carnival holidays themed. After each service, we're going to go outside. There's going to be food trucks. There's going to be carnival games. It's just, there's going to be food. It's just a great opportunity for you guys to bring your friends. We're going to have an an amazing time together. You do not want to miss next Sunday. And guys, people have been asking me, Tyler, we want to hear the holiday song. I just, people keep texting me. It's exhausting, but guys, it's coming next week. We have a holidays Broadway production. You do not want to miss it. It's going to bless your life, but we cannot wait, guys. 
And I just want to challenge you guys, take these fall of days cards, these trunk or treat cards, and get them out. What an incredible message from Pastor Ryan to encourage us to have the compassion of Christ, to go walk across the street, walk across the aisle at work, and invite someone. You don't know who around you is ready to get saved. We had a guy in our church go to a local high school and presented the gospel to a football team, public high school, 15 young men raised their hand to give their life to Jesus this week in the city of Jacksonville. It's just amazing. So I wonder who God has placed around you who's ready to be saved, who's ready to come to church for a chunk or treat or for a fall day Sunday and watch God change their life. Let's get these out this week and believe God to reach this city. Amen? Really excited about that. Guys, another thing we're excited about is we have our Victory Saturday coming up on November 16th. It's in just a couple Saturdays. Maybe you're in here and you just raised your hand to give your life to Jesus. What an incredible thing that you just did. And that a great next step that you can take with us is to come to Victory Saturday. Go to the website, the app, um, or online, and uh, go to events. You're gonna see Victory Saturday. We take most of the day, and we just dedicate it to finding and experiencing victory in your life with Jesus. What is Victory Saturday? It's a day where we're going to come together to be planted in the Word of God and to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can walk out this life and live in victory. Amen? And that's what we want for you. So life group leaders, or if you're in a life group, come together with people in your life group. It's for high school students, college students, all of adults. We wanna invite you guys to join us. So sign up today. It's in just a few weeks for our Victory Saturday. Before we go, I have two more things. We would love to connect with you. And so right there in your seats, there's a connect card. If everyone would grab that and start filling it out, there's a couple ways digitally that you can fill out the connect card. You can scan the QR code. You can text MYSCC to 4848. If you're watching online, we're going to post the information there for you to connect. But we want to say, if you're new, welcome to our church. We're so glad that you would join us today. What a beautiful day to be in the house of God. Amen? And so we're just so glad that you guys would be here. Our Connect team is going to reach out to you this week to help you take your next step. And I'll say this about the Connect card. If you're one of the ones that raised your hand to give your life to Jesus, wow, there's nothing more important and just to help you take your next step on that Connect card, the first box under Next Steps says, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus today. If you'll check that box, we'll help you take your next step for Jesus to continue to grow in your faith. So thank you guys for taking these cards and dropping them in the back of the auditorium. There's a black box. Just place them in there, and you will be set. Last thing I have for you guys is our Grow Track. Everyone say Grow Track. Guys, we have Grow Track right after service today. Uh, it goes about 25, 30 minutes, and you're gonna learn all about how you can grow in your faith. Uh, what do we believe as a church? How can you impact this city? And we really, we wanna invite you to join us for that. You're gonna go out these doors on my right, go up the stairs, you'll see the Grow Track sign. And we have, an, we have an extra invitation because we have two Grow Tracks today. We have a Grow Track for English speaking people, but how amazing is this that we have a Grow Track dedicated for people that speak Portuguese. Come on. We have seen, the, I'll just say, there's a Portuguese, Portuguese life group that meets here on Wednesday nights, and I think it's the most fun life group in the church. I want to be in their life group, and man, so if, you're, if you speak Portuguese, we, wanted, we want you to join us for uh, the Portuguese speaking Grow Track. It is going to be a blessing to your life. So we'll see you at Grow Track, whether English speaking or Portuguese speaking, we'll see you up there. Guys, if you guys will stand, let's go ahead and pray. I wanna pray a blessing over you as we go out this week and we live out this word that Pastor Ryan shared with us. Let's lift our hands. God, thank you. Lord, I pray that we would be willing vessels of your grace and your love and your mercy this week. God, I thank you that there is a city that we uh, live in, that it's, there's a lot of unrest, there's a lot of tension, but I thank you, God, that you are sending us out as the missionaries in this city. And I pray, Father, that we would go out in prayer, we would go out in faith, knowing that you can use anyone that will just say yes to you, God. And so I pray that we would invite people to the trunk or treat. I pray that we would invite people to join us for church next Sunday, for Fall Day Sunday. And as we do this, God, I pray that your love would invade the hearts of every person in this city through us, God, and that they would be saved. 
Thank you for our church. Thank you for this incredible word. May we go live it out. We love you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you, and we will see you at Grow Track.